It's time for another Tips, Tricks, and Oops podcast. Welcome to the Envision Tips, Tricks, and Oops podcast. I am Esten Talavera, and to my left is Sanford Alexander. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here, and we're looking forward to a new series that uh, we hope you'll find entertaining and informative. And in the middle, we have Therese Gorin. Hello. Good to talk with you all today. We wanted to just start off with a, an introduction podcast and see how everything just kind of goes. So we're going to talk a little bit about what kind of devices we have um, and what kind of devices we own and have owned in the past. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit first here. And I have an iPhone 4S. Um, I've, I had an iPhone 4 a while back. Um, and I had an iPod Touch. And Sanford, I know you have an iPhone 4S. I have a, f yep. And yeah. before that, I had Nokia 6682. Mm -hmm. And did you use, you used MobileSpeak on that, right? Or did you uh, use Talks? Talks. Yeah. OK. Um, and Therese? I have an iPhone 4. Mm -hmm. And all three of us are voiceover users. VoiceOver is the screen reader that we, VoiceOver is the screen reader that's used on the iPhones and the iOS devices. Mobile speak and talks are screen readers that are used for the Nokia devices and earlier phone systems. <coughs> and one of the things that uh, helps us give you some diversity in our opinions is in our other technology, I'm a Windowize user. Esten, you use? I use system access in an NVDA on my Windows machines. Um, on Mac, I use VoiceOver, which is, is the same screen reader um, on the phone as it is on the um, computers. I am a JAWS, actually I'm a Windowize user, but I teach a lot of folks through Envision how to use JAWS. So I kind of play around with a little bit of both, but I am a low vision person, so I use ZoomText a lot as well. So as you can see, we have all four of the really major screen readers covered here with System Access, JAWS, NVDA, and Window Eyes. We also have a low vision person here who has experience using Zoom text. And actually, Esten, uh, people might be wondering, for those that are watching the podcast, we are in the Envision AT training room and have some AT toys around. Mm -hmm. so yes, we do. Uh, we have behind us is a, a, a large-ish, I'm guessing, CCTV. Um, and uh, over further um, to my right, we have a low vision keyboard. Um, usually that is connected to the laptop that I bring in to um, use for the people that I work with while I'm here. So um, and each one of us um, does different things um, here. I mostly work with um, patients t on AT matters, teaching them how to use the computer and keyboard. Sanford, do you want to tell them a little bit about what well, you do? Well, at a Division, which is a nonprofit agency headquartered in Wichita, Kansas, um, I am a Braille instructor and consultant on a variety of other blindness-related projects. I'm actually uh, a retired VA employee and work here on a part-time basis and have been involved in AT since the early 80s. I do some contract work here in the clinic working through teaching folks how to do a lot of the Windows programs. Uh, in AT. Um, I also work part-time downstairs in our daycare. I get to play with the little ones, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Um, I think what we want to do mostly on this podcast is to just give you an idea of, of our adventures with all of this technology that we're working with. Not just with iPhone, not just with Mac, but any of the devices that we're using, any of the apps that we work with, it's just going to be hopefully a lot of fun for y'all. Exactly. Actually, the way we got started with this, uh, Esten and I have been involved in a, an assistive technology camp that Envision has run for about 
six years or so. Six or seven years, yeah. And um, Eston started out as one of the camp attenders, and I was helping with one of the presentations dealing with technology, assistive technology particularly, and um, I was asked to talk about the history of it and some of the things that have changed over the years. And over the past few years, we kind of developed a, a, a young guy, old guy thing with Eston and I. <laughs> Because a lot of the things that, that I use are older, and all of the things that he uses are more recent, and, and you know, the things I use are, are museum uh, exhibits for him. I think that it's really interesting. What, can you um, tell, tell everyone what kind of computer system you're using at home right now? I am one of the few remaining. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm one of the few remaining dosasaurs. I am still using Windows 98 with Window Eyes 5.1 because anything more recent than that doesn't really work very well. Uh, Eudora 6, I think, Therese? Well, you're at least 7.2, 7 so you're not that far right. behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I have been clawing and grabbing onto the carpet <laughs> to stay where I'm comfortable for a variety of reasons yeah. and, and being forced into the 21st century because it just doesn't really work anymore. Yeah. Now, now Sanford, um, let, let's talk about your, your phone because you, as you said, you were claw, clawing and, and all this stuff and trying not to go come into... The 21st century, but all of a sudden something happened, and you uh, you, you got an iPhone. Um, over the past three years or so, I've uh, been toying with what happens after my Nokia ceases to function or becomes obsolete. And as you already can see, I have a propensity for hanging on to stuff. And uh, Therese has been listening to me for years talking about my desire when I get new equipment to be able to participate in the thing we've heard about for 30 years called convergence, where you'd have more and more devices coming together in one box. And I had a trekker, and I had my phone, and a bunch. I had my braille note, carry my calendar, and, and the dream was being able to get more of that into one box and, and consolidate what you had to carry around. The only problem with the iPhone was, as, as many of you know, for a blind person, a touch screen is the kiss of death. It's totally useless. And I was frankly terrified at the concept of going to a touch screen. And Therese can attest to that over the mm -hmm. So I was debating about it, and I knew the day was getting closer and closer, and I knew um, someday I'd have to do something, and I hoped that some technology would exist that would allow that to happen. And Eston and I were going to a meeting up in Kansas City back in November of 11, mm -hmm. and my Nokia went to Abu Dhabi, <laughs> which is a nice way of saying the SIM card got fried, the phone was completely destroyed, totally useless, and I needed to do something right now. And so you ended up with an iPhone 4S. Yep, and, and Therese with her iPhone, and you with your 4S, mm -hmm. uh, both were able to give me a little bit of uh, confidence and support mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to take the plunge into the, the land of touch screen. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> I have a little bit of a different story because I was using a Braille Note Classic. I used a Braille Note Classic um, I got that when I was in fifth grade, and that was probably sometime around 2000, 2001. Uh, 
I used the Brendel Classic for about mm, three or four years. It worked for what I needed it to do. It was kind of slow and clunky, but it worked. Then I got an Empower, and it was a little better, but it was still a little clunky. And um, I still had a little bit of uh, issues with some of the processor stuff because I, when I, when I used these units, I mean I used these units. They, I was a power user of these. I was everything I did was using them, and I did not, for the longest time, want to mess with doing a keyboard because I was comfortable with the Braille style keyboard, and that is something that um, now. I look back on and say, wow, I really, really needed to get out and actually use a Braille style keyboard, or a, a, an actual QWERTY keyboard, the normal keyboard, and make sure that I was able to use both efficiently. So it took me a long time. The only thing that I really use my note ticker for now is what it was really meant for, which is to note take. And to use that in class and use that in college. I'm a sophomore at Wichita State University, and so I have to take a lot of notes in my college classes. To learn and rely on just one type of keyboard, and especially with the Braille, is not a very good idea because it means that you won't be able to be very employable. Because if um, you are only able to use a Braille keyboard and you are working in a, a place that will not allow certain machines in um, that place, in, in, in the workplace, you won't be able to use that. Um, and so it's important to learn to use a QWERTY keyboard because that is what the mainstream uses and that is one of the reasons, one of the very many reasons why it's important to learn the QWERTY keyboard or the, the normal keyboard. I, I think the other element there, Eston, is that if you only rely on one modality, you're limiting yourself, you get stuck in a corner. Um, as I said before, um, I use System Access and NVDA on my Windows machine. And the reason for that is because, let's say that I boot my sh machine up, everything's going well, System Access comes on, all of a sudden System Access crashes. There's no speech, I have no vision so I can't rely on any kind of screen to help me with that or any kind, of, any kind of that. So I need to have a backup screen reader just in case and you know if NVDA doesn't work I, I was going to have to find another screen reader. Um, before I knew about NVDA I used a trial version of JAWS uh, as a backup screen reader and that worked relatively well. But NVDA is a full screen reader and it's also a free one and so that is very nice too. Um, I don't personally think it's as powerful as system access can be, but it works very well for um, lower power users and that kind of thing. And I think for our, all of our listeners, we, we want to make sure you understand we're not trying to endorse products or particular... I could see hate mail coming in about your, your anti-PacMate and you pro this or that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that, it's not what we're trying to do. I, I think it People that use other equipment, other systems, are going to uh, be comfortable with them and going to know their strengths better than we will, something that we don't use ourselves a lot. Uh, so that's we're not here to try and say this is better than that is, but I think we are trying to say that we've run into a lot of circumstances where we've, we've encountered um, obstacles or challenges and we've found tricks to get around it after we've uh, run into our oops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and we'd like to share with you some of the tips to work around that. And I feel, wouldn't, wouldn't you say that if, if anybody has tips that they would like to share and they would, that they would like for us to share about a product that they should contact us on, on, the, on, the, con on the comments. Um, on, on the comments page. So um, I, we would love to see that and we will definitely take a look at that and make sure that we try and get um, all of the comments in and all of the tips in. Um, at first it probably won't be difficult but as we keep going it may become we have an entire segment of just tips from other users. We don't know. Uh, but 
for right now, we, we rely on the technology and the experience that we have had. And we try and get as much technology and as much experience as we can so that we can get that information out to you. Therese, mm -hmm. you've started with an iPhone, uh, or have an iPhone, right? I have an iPhone 4, and, yes. and we were talking about how you, uh, how we got to where we got to. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about where you, how you did. How I did? How you got to where you are. Oh, probably 15 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, learning on window eyes. And got quite comfortable with that. Just learning how to use the computer. Some folks in the area needed a teacher, and everybody uses JAWS. That's what uh, that's what uh, state agencies and schools and such they they train their kids on on JAWS. So I was learning JAWS to uh, so I could train folks. Um, it gets a little confusing at times because I've got my window eyes that I am more comfortable with just because that's what I use what I learned first. JAWS is a wonderful program, but I get the two mixed up. I get my hotkeys twisted around all the time. <laughs> and yeah. th that can be a little bit confusing. But I'm also a Zoom text user because I'm low vision. And there's hotkeys in that as well. So I tend to get all three jumbled. And then I sit there and wonder, why in the world will this hotkey not work? And then I think, oh, <laughs> I'm using it for the wrong program. Aston, I think we probably have run out of time for today and uh, should wrap it up for this, uh, this podcast. I agree. Hopefully you have enjoyed this podcast and stay tuned for our next episode.